As wind moves across the surface of the ocean, friction between the moving air and the surface of the water causes the water to begin to move as well. This transfer of energy through friction is how wind causes surface currents. Once water at the surface begins to move, some of the energy gets transferred to deeper layers, allowing water movement to penetrate to depths of 50 to 100 meters. The details of how water behaves as energy from wind moves from the surface to depth was first investigated by Walfred Ekman in 1905. He was given the idea to investigate surface currents by the Arctic explorer Fridtjof Nansen. While on an expedition, Nansen noticed that wind-blown sea ice did not move in the same direction as the wind. Instead, it moved 20 to 40 degrees to the right of the wind. He correctly speculated that this was due to the influence of Earth's rotation. Ekman took Nansen's idea and built a mathematical model to explain it. Ekman's model treats water as a series of layers that move independently of each other. As each layer moves, the energy from that motion can transfer from layer to layer. Consider a small vertical column of water that starts at the surface and extends towards the bottom. As energy moves from the surface to deeper layers, two things happen. First, because some energy is lost in each transfer to a deeper layer, water speed diminishes quickly with depth. Second, as the movement is transferred deeper, Coriolis effect deflects each layer to the right of the one above it. This creates a spiral pattern called an Ekman spiral. One result of this deflection pattern is that at depth, a small amount of water is actually moving in the completely opposite direction than the wind that started the motion in the first place. Because water movement diminishes quickly with depth, Ekman showed that the net transfer of water is at a 90 degree angle to wind direction. Because this is all driven by the Coriolis effect, the deflection is 90 degrees to the right in the northern hemisphere and 90 degrees to the left in the southern hemisphere. This movement of water at right angles to the direction of the prevailing winds is called Ekman transport. And consistent with Nansen's observations, the water right at the surface moves 20 to 40 degrees to the right or left of the wind direction. This variability is driven by differences in how long and how consistently the wind blows. The dynamics of Ekman transport contribute to some important features in the ocean environment. In coastal areas where prevailing winds blow along the coast so that net water movement is offshore, the water pushed out to sea is replaced by deeper water causing upwelling. The upwelling of this deeper water moves nutrients to the surface, making these regions of high productivity. Wind blowing in the opposite direction pushes surface water towards the coast. As water piles up at the shore, it is forced down, creating downwelling. The concentration of relatively nutrient-poor surface water makes these regions less productive. Ekman-driven up- and downwelling are not limited to coastal environments. In the open ocean, trade winds also cause Ekman transport. Along the equator, prevailing winds blow from east to west. This causes water to move away from the equator in both the northern and southern hemispheres, creating a region of diverging currents that lowers the water level right at the equator, causing deeper water to upwell. In mid-latitudes, around 30 degrees north and south, where prevailing winds transition from easterly to westerly, water piles up as the easterly and westerly winds drive surface currents towards each other. This convergence causes downwelling. Just like along the coast, upwelling along the equator brings nutrient-rich water to the surface, stimulating primary productivity. The piling up of water at mid-latitudes contribute to the formation of gyres that circulate water in these areas. If you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it and giving it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment with any questions or suggestions, and if you want to keep up with the content here at Science Primer, click the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.